Yeah, he's here. How good. Looks like you got a problem. Yeah, I have a little accident here. Where's the water cut off? I think it's around back by the pool. You want me to show it to you? No, no, I'll get it. Well, it was this guy called me out to his house Saturday morning. And I, I got out there, and he's putting in a tree in this front yard, a big tree. And he has dug a hole in the front yard and accidentally breaks the water main. Well, I go around the back of the house to turn off the water. On my way back, I notice that he's filling up his swimming pool with a garden hose. Well, there's no water coming out of that garden hose because the water pressure's down from the hole out front. The tap is open. Say that his wife or one of his kids inside the house decides that they want to drink a water. Now we have a classic example of a cross connection. They turn on the faucet. They're not going to get water from the water main. They're going to get water from the bottom of the swimming pool. It's going to be siphoned up and into the house. All he's going to get is the water sucked up from the bottom of the swimming pool, which includes chlorine and acids or whatever chemicals you can think of. I think the public is generally unaware of cross connections uh, because of the uh, fact that plumbing uh, pipes and such are in the walls, they're in the ground and this sort of thing, and uh, out of sight is out of mind, sort of. Sort of uh, uh, the results, of course, uh, show up in the hospitals and uh, places like that when uh, cross connections uh, uh, occur or where back siphonage occurs and, and uh, contaminated water gets into the drinking water system. Every city and town faces the task of providing its citizens with water. Usually, this means taking water from a readily available source, such as a river or reservoir, and removing impurities at a treatment plant, such as this one in Austin, Texas. When the water leaves the plant, it's fresh and safe for consumption. Once it's been used, the runoff or wastewater will then return to the treatment plant to be decontaminated. This is the basic idea behind plumbing to provide a system of safe water and its disposal. However, fresh water can be contaminated at the point of consumption, just prior to usage when a cross connection occurs. A cross connection is a situation which allows clean water to come in contact with wastewater. For example, imagine someone in an upstairs apartment who is dyeing clothes in a wash tub. This individual attaches a hose to the faucet on the sink thereby extending the end of the water line. The hose is left running while submerged in the dyed water. The end of the water line is now in direct contact with a potentially contaminating substance. Now suppose a handyman arrives on the scene to do some repair work in the basement. Not being a qualified plumber, he is unaware of the dangers of a cross connection. Without warning the individual tenants, he turns off the water pressure for the entire apartment complex. Without any pressure, the water in the pipes is suspended at the various levels of the apartment complex. When an outlet at a lower level is turned on, gravity will cause the water at upper levels to flow downward. The backflow of water as it is draining will create a negative pressure. This negative pressure creates suction that causes the cross connection to act as a siphon, pulling the dyed water into the fresh water pipes and contaminating all the water in the apartment complex. You've got two areas, basic areas of contamination. You've got a contaminant that was not going to kill you necessarily. It may be going to make you sick. This is the bacteria type of thing. Now, you've got a very dangerous type of contamination, which is the acids, the manufacturing leads, and things like this that, that can kill you. Uh, they can create epidemics and this type of thing. And we have different methods of controlling the, the potential of cross-connection in those instances. And they are quite expensive uh, backflow preventers and things of this nature. 
on this flushometer valve, we have a vacuum breaker to protect the water supply. On this other flushometer valve, we do not have the vacuum breaker installed. Aware that inadequate plumbing causes serious health problems, every large city has adopted strict plumbing codes designed to protect the public. In the state of Texas, these codes are reviewed and incorporated into the examination given by the State Board of Plumbing Examiners, whose main responsibility is to test and license plumbers who work in the state. Okay, the plumbing exam consists of three parts, <clears throat> written, shop work, and actually installing the plumbing in a miniature house. Now, back the first portion that is uh, done when the examinee comes in in the morning is the written part. And this consists of questions, uh, 60 questions on general plumbing, uh, mainly on uh, pertaining to cross connections. Uh, after the examinee completes these questions, then he is sent back to what we call our shop area. And he does the shop work, and this consists of six different projects. And the projects are gas burner adjustment, which the examinee actually adjusts the gas burner to what we think is a proper adjustment. Then he does what we call a screw pipe project. He cuts, spreads, measures, reams, and prepares a nipple. Then he does what we call a copper sweat project. And he also cuts, reams, and sweats this copper. Then he does what we call a flare copper project. And then he does what we call our saw pipe project. And then uh, this completes the shop work. Then he is sent back up to the front desk, as we call it, and is given some instructions on a miniature house plan. The man then sits down at his desk and w does what we call a material list, makes a material list. In other words, this is actually taking off the fittings that he thinks will properly do a good plumbing job. After he completes this, he's taken back to the shop area where he's given another 12 to 15 minutes instructions on our miniature house. And then the man actually installs the plumbing, the, uh, mainly the waste admit system, in this miniature house. Now, this usually normally completes the examination. The man has all day to complete the examination, eight hours. He started at eight o'clock in the morning. He has until five minutes to five to complete the exam. The way I see the examining board, they're set up to test individuals that are desiring to engage in active plumbing. As far as I can see, they're doing a very thorough job. Uh, as far as I can see, they're a, not a very forceful agency, state agency. Uh, they're very weak in as far as enforcement because uh, they only have four inspectors out in the field to cover the whole state of Texas. Uh, you know that everybody is going to go over the speed limit every once in a while. And uh, laws are only as good as the enforcement of them. And with four men out in the field, you can imagine what kind of enforcement you're going to have. <laughs> The World's Fair probably is one of the most uh, uh, well-known examples of, uh, of back siphonage and uh, cross connections. Or uh, This was a, a dysentery, an amoebic dysentery outbreak uh, during the World's Fair, and there, were at least, there was at least one hotel and perhaps two hotels that were involved in this. There were uh, some 98 deaths, I believe, yeah, 98 deaths and 1,400 cases of amoebic dysentery resulting from this particular in incident. It is important that the public use licensed plumbers. They should even go so far as to request them to show their license. In this manner, they can be assured that the minimum health standards will be met in the installation of their plumbing system. You don't have to be licensed to do plumbing work. There ain't nothing to it. I think the, the cities <clears throat> that are required to have ordinances have good ordinances. And most of our cities, as we have here in Austin, have gone to a, a national code. But once you get out of the, the incorporated city, then there's really nothing there to uh, govern uh, the installation of plumbing. First off, <clears throat> I ain't just a plumber. I do all types of handiwork, you know, carpentry, painting, roofing, you name it. Oh, I guess I got in plumbing about six years ago by accident. Fella 
asked me to put a sink in on a carpentry job, and uh, I managed to save him a few dollars, so I just kind of stuck with it. Areas of less than 5,000, I believe is the figure, uh, do not have any control at all. I think that we should have a minimum ordinance for those small areas, at least to take care of these potential cross-connections. Cross-connection? Well, uh, I ain't sure I know what that is. Uh, uh, see, out here, we don't have the, the problems that you people have in the big cities. I'd, I'd know it if I saw one, I guess, probably. I would, I would think that most people don't know what a cross-connection is. And uh, this is just a, 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 my personal opinion. I've been a plumber for 25 years. Until I came to work here four years ago, I really didn't know what a cross-connection was. I've been plumbing a while now, and I ain't ever heard one of them cross-connection things hurting anybody. Thank you.